Sadie Tanner Moselle Alexander's childhood experiences developed in her a determination to succeed in the classroom and public arena. In her grandfather's home, she met many leaders, Booker T. Washington, Carter G. Woodson, Elaine Locke, Mary Church Terrell. With a strong sense of self, Sadie fought in tolerance wherever she found it. She wrote, let us imagine you came from outer space and entered the University of Pennsylvania. You spoke perfect English, but no one spoke to you. Sadie met with the provost to correct the lack of lunchrooms or restaurants that would serve blacks. Provost Smith did nothing. The small number of black students and the racial insensitivity that existed on Penn's campus were two very good reasons for the development of black support systems. Sadie was elected president of the first black sorority at the University of Pennsylvania in 1918, Gamma Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta. Sadie T.M. Alexander, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority's first national president, 1919 to 1923, earned four degrees from the University of Pennsylvania. She was the first African-American woman in the United States to receive a doctorate in economics, the first to receive a law degree from Penn, and the first admitted to the Pennsylvania Bar. She continued breaking ground throughout her professional career, practicing law for over 50 years. In 1946, President Truman appointed her to the Committee on Civil Rights. She played a key role in the formation of the Philadelphia Commission on Human Relations, and President Carter appointed her chair of the White House Conference on Aging in 1981. Dr. Sadie Tanner Moselle Alexander, visionary with an extraordinary intelligence, trailblazer and advocate for social justice, departed this life in 1989. She left a rich heritage of accomplishments and success that will never be forgotten. The most glowing successes are the result of an inner fire. The Sadie T. M. Alexander Award is the highest award presented by the Philadelphia Alumni Chapter to a deserving person who has demonstrated outstanding community and public service in the Philadelphia area. The recipient receives an original piece of sculpture that was conceived by Dr. Constance E. Clayton and designed by Mr. Franck Bourgeois, a former Philadelphia artist, sculptor, and teacher. The sculpture depicts a young woman taking a stride toward equal opportunities and horizons, releasing the mantle of segregation and the chains of discrimination. This award is a replica of the original statue presented to Dr. Alexander in 1966. Highlighting some of the 36 outstanding recipients receiving the Sadie T. M. Alexander Award since 1966, a common thread is their admiration of Dr. Alexander's determination to right the wrongs she encountered. Let me just simply say a couple of things. First of all, uh, I knew Sadie Alexander, and she was an exceptional human being, an exceptional person, an exceptional uh, person of leadership and talent and achievement, uh, in fact, a pioneer. 
William M. Gray III, educator, congressman, senior minister of Bright Hope Baptist Church, and recently retired president and chief executive officer of the College Board, United Negro College Fund, was the Sadie T. M. Alexander Award honoree for Philadelphia Alumni's 75th anniversary celebration in 2002. The one Delta that I have always admired was Sadie T. M. Alexander. And I admired her for several reasons, because I'd always wanted to be a lawyer. But um, the first national I attended, I I think it was in St. Louis. St. Louis or Kansas City, I think it was in St. Louis, and it must have been in 1939 or 40, because I finished college in 39. And I immediately joined a uh, uh, alumni chapter in We Woke Oklahoma. There's a chapter Delta in We Woke Oklahoma, believe it or not. Right. And uh, so they sent me as a delegate. There was a lady who was the chairman of the uh, National Scholarship Committee. And when she made her report, everybody who had received scholarships came from the East Coast. Mm -hmm. Now, unfortunately for her, I knew one of the girls. She had gone to Lincoln because her, husband, her um, uncle was a professor there, a science professor. And if there was anybody on the campus who always had a plenty of money. And so at that time, I weighed exactly 88 pounds. And I was barely 20 years old. But I got up and I challenged this grand officer on her report and told her why I didn't like it and told her that I knew about one of those to whom they had given this scholarship. And I think I was doing very well, but way over in the corner, there rose a lady <laughs> who could argue much better than I, and she okay. took my side of the argument, and that was Sadie Kim. Did she? Okay. Yes, she did. That okay. was when I first met her. Okay. Judge Juanita Kid Stout. Within two years of arriving in Philadelphia after law school, Juanita Kid Stout earned a reputation as the hardest working lawyer in Philadelphia. In 1959, she became the first black woman in the United States to be elected a judge. Judge Juanita Kid Stout served 30 years before she was appointed to the state Supreme Court. Dorothy Sumner's Rush, educator, political activist, member and vice president of the Philadelphia School Board, was appointed by Governor Casey to the Philadelphia Trial Court Nominating Commission and co-chair of a five-person transition team by Mayor John Street. Orion Reed had a great career as a TV consumer reporter, but left to volunteer full-time for the National Alzheimer's Association. She became chair of the National Board, a job that carries no salary, but has allowed her to make a difference. Getting families help and information they need, promoting early diagnosis and more research has become her life's passion. There are some people here who paved the way for all of this. I'm telling you, there are people who paved the way. Sadie Alexander was one of those folks who paved the way for me. They paved the way. And, and I will tell you, I, am, I, have, I, I, I feel in some respects, and I'm humbled by the fact that for whatever reason, it was in God's plan that I would be a part of the history of this city and of this universe in this very special way. And I want you to know that I appreciate very much the recognition that you are, you are offering here today. And I accept this as a, as a challenge. 
Because I believe that when we find ourselves in leadership positions, that we really have to go the extra mile. We have to do a little bit more. We have to do better, and we have to say and provide an example to the young people who are watching us. The Honorable John Street began his public career as a community activist. A fiery leader, he led efforts for fair housing opportunities for the poor and challenged the Philadelphia School Board to spend more money on students and less on administration. John Street served as president of city council before being elected mayor in 2000. Well, first of all, it was an extremely high honor uh, to be selected to receive this award. Uh, it, I, I need to share with you, and I don't think most people know this because I mm -hmm. haven't shared it with most people, but I, I, I had attended many other ceremonies where the Sage Hill Alexander Award was given. And on that particular morning, as I observed the scholarship recipients, something came together for me. For years, I had felt that it would be good to establish a scholarship endowment fund so that we wouldn't have to keep struggling every year. I decided on the day while the ceremony was going on to propose the $25,000 contribution. I decided that that morning. When we were given the award. When, you, when I received that award mm -hmm. and I observed the scholarship recipients there, mm -hmm. it, it just touched my heart. Mm -hmm. And I had always wanted to see the sorority establish an endowment fund. Mm -hmm. And God simply spoke to me and said, you give a certain amount. And I was just going to put that amount in and let the sorority, you know, just try to um, gradually build on it. And he spoke to me again before the, before the morning was over. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, you ask the sorority to match it. Then it becomes, they, be, they then become a part of it. Mm -hmm. And it's not something outside that they're being asked to do. It mm -hmm. then becomes theirs. Exactly. And that's.